Hi, Investy Besties. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are a returning Investy Bestie, thank you so much for coming back. I do appreciate you and you and you and you and you being here. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share this video with a friend and leave me a comment down below. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how much do you need to retire? It's a question that I've been getting so much <laughs> on this channel is how much do I need to retire? What should I be thinking about? What should I be putting together? And we're going to talk about some things today. And also in this video, towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick fire update from my husband and myself. You guys know we're trying to retire early at almost five years. We're trying to retire at 42 so that we can do the things that we want to do, like start up our own business and travel. So got a good video coming for you today. Let's talk about how much do you need to retire? And I'm really happy that a lot of you are asking these questions and are really thinking about your future. I know it's so easy to kind of enjoy the here and now, and you should, um, and your budget will help you to do that so you don't overspend. But I always say, if you plan on being alive, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, if you plan on seeing your grandbabies and you don't want to be working like crazy, then you have to structure a plan for your future. Okay. And I am here to help you do that. Now, as I always say, I am not a financial advisor. Your girl is not a fiduciary. I don't have all of the acronyms behind my name, but I do share financial knowledge and I teach with the receipts, okay? I don't know a lot of people that share their 401k account, their HSA account, the Roth IRA that will bring you in that Robinhood account. I don't know a whole lot of people that do that. So let's talk about how much do you need to retire? Now, whenever this question kind of popped into my head a couple years ago, I just figured, oh, I just need a million dollars. I just need a million dollars to retire. And I'm here to tell you guys, you really need to really break that thought down. So every time that thought comes into your head, like how much do I need to retire? You need to sit down, maybe grab a piece of paper. I also created a retirement worksheet that was free for a couple months. It's not free anymore, uh, but it's still, I think, reasonable for the value that I share in that tracker. But in that worksheet and over a hundred of you downloaded it and so many of you told me you have used it that worksheet breaks that thought down of how much do i need to retire it gives you a starting point so one of the things people do not think about when that thought comes into their head is their current age the age that they want to retire and the time in between so if you are 30 and you say you know what i want to retire at 60 okay that's 30 years that you need to figure out what you're going to do, what strategies you're going to implement, where you need to be investing at, saving at, maybe creating some type of passive income, something in those 30 years so that you can get from point A to point B. Another thing is that when that thought pops into your head, some people don't need the same amount of money to retire as someone else. And I know like when I just said, when I thought about that question years ago, I just put a million dollars attached to it. But sometimes you don't need a million dollars to retire. Other people find that they need more than a million dollars to retire. And so I'm helping you to get to that number in this video. And that worksheet that I created will help you get to that number. So another thing that you need to think about is your current net worth state. Your net worth is a financial report card of your current state. So you need to know how much debt that you have. Okay. That's very important. You also need to know how many assets because it's no point and being debt free and then you don't have any assets working for you on the other end okay that's why i'm a big fan of while you're paying off debt you should still be investing okay because a lot of people are debt free but they have no assets they have no retirement accounts they have no investing accounts they have some savings they don't but they don't have any solid assets that could continue to grow for them over time so do both i'm a big fan of that pay off debt because that's very important but you should be investing a little bit of something something into the market and you can just start like with the investing challenge or with a roth ira maybe contributing to the match at your job with your 401k 457 403b things of the like okay so you need to start with your net worth as well write down all your liabilities or your debts write down all your assets and then when you minus your liabilities from your assets you have your net worth. So let's talk about cost of living and inflation when you retire. So that's something else that you need to think about before you get to your magic number. Okay. So you need to think about inflation. If you have any older people in your family, like grandparents, maybe older aunties, uncles, parents, they often will reflect on how much things used to be way back when. Okay. I have it 
famously in my family. They always talk about how things used to cost in the 60s and the 70s. Bread, gas, milk, how much it costs to buy a house. And you'll see the articles online as well, how cheaper things, how much cheaper things were back in the day. And can you imagine in 2032, that's 10 years from 2022, that's 10 years from now, how much gas will cost per gallon, how much it will cost to buy a house. Like we think the housing market is crazy now, we think rents are crazy now. How much will it cost then? These are all things that inflation really has its hands in that we don't apply to our future. But yes, you have to factor in inflation. And I always suggest adding whatever your number is, and we're gonna talk about how to get to your number, add 5% to that number to help cover you through those inflation years, especially if you plan on retiring early. And retiring early is just any time before the traditional retirement age, okay? And then your cost of living. What does retirement look like for you? For some people, it's to have a paid off house. Others, it's to travel. Other people, it's to do absolutely nothing but sit on the beach somewhere. Other people, it's maybe to volunteer at that church or at an organization that they are passionate about. And for other people, it's to focus on a side business, so to focus on their passion or their dream full time, like my husband and myself. We're not just going to be sitting down all the time. We will be sitting down though. We will be sitting down. But it's to focus those nine to five hours on our passion, on our dreams. And so what does retirement look like for you in that sense? So one of the things that I've done on this channel is create a mock budget. I'm a big fan of mock budget. It's not like the end all be all. It's not in stone. It helps you to have a clearer picture of what your retirement is going to look like. So you need to figure out, will you have a mortgage in retirement or do you plan on just renting? Cause some people want to rent. Do you plan on getting a new car every couple years? If so, you need to put that into your budget. If you're going to have a car payment or you're going to have a paid off car, of course you need utilities and lights and food. Do you plan on giving, maybe starting accounts for your grandbabies? That is something that you need to think about. And then healthcare. Again, guys, this is a big one because as you age, our reliance or our need for medical care, dental care, assisted living care goes up exponentially. We really need to factor those things into our retirement number, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, so once you figure out your mock budget, because those are your projected expenses for retirement, then you know, okay, that how much income you need to have coming in. So once you figure that out, so you add up all of your ex projected expenses, you have the amount that you need. So you need to make that much money to support yourself in your retirement years, times that number, your projected income number now, by 25. So 25 is a great point to start at, is 25 years. Some people will times it by 28, other will time it by 30 years. But again, guys, a great starting point is 25 because as a beginner, you don't want to get too overwhelmed. So just times that <laughs> income number that you are going to need by 25. And that is the number that you need to be working on for your retirement. That is your starting point. Remember, this is not the end all be all. This is just a starting point. So once you have that number as your starting point, now you need to create a plan. So now that you can go back to that question you were asking, how much do I need to retire? Oh, I need a million dollars. Okay. Let's just say I need a million dollars. So I need a million dollars. I have 30 years to do it because the example is I'm 30 years old. I'm retiring at 60. I have 30 years to get a million dollars. So one of the first things you should do and start at is your 401k company based sponsored accounts, especially if you're going to match, take advantage of that. The next thing you need to do is if you have access to an HSA, open up an HSA. And with all of these accounts that I'm going to be talking about, you don't have to kind of jump in with big numbers, a hundred dollars, $50, $25. And then when you see that your budget, is kind of being sustained and you feel like you can do a little bit more, you can increase your contributions whenever you want. Okay. It's not set in stone. So start slow and build from there. But yes, a 401k or your company sponsored account, start there. Then you want to start with your HSA if you have access to one, because that'll help you with medical expenses as you get older. If you have access to a Roth IRA, I wholeheartedly suggest you do a Roth IRA. I talked about the different types of investing accounts in this video right here. Go back and take a look. But a Roth is amazing. I love Roths and all those gains 
grow tax-free in a nutshell. The next thing that you want to open up if you care to is a taxable account. So this is like an M1, a Robinhood, a Webull, and Fidelity and Vanguard also offer these types of accounts. So these are funded with after-tax dollars. And some of us like myself are building like a strictly dividend portfolio taxable account. So that way we can withdraw those dividends or we'll have passive income when we do hit our retirement number. Just another source of income. And speaking of that, I know the hot topic or the hot buzzword nowadays is social security, but it is really something that we need to think about even if social security is around, even if it is still lurking out there, will it be enough for you to live on? I know a lot of seniors nowadays are realizing that it's not. And some of them have to get part-time jobs. You'll see some of the older people bagging groceries or pushing shopping carts or working full-time jobs at fast food places because they need the extra income, guys. And I try to teach on this channel that you, when you are crafting your numbers for retirement, do not include Social Security. Because if you get it, then that's like icing on the top, okay? That's like a cherry on the top if you get it. But if, if it, you don't get it or it's not around or it's not enough, you don't have to worry about it because you got a heavy, solid arsenal, a solid nest egg working on your behalf. And I cannot tell you how stress-free that is. Once you get your magic number or your retirement number, you want to start with those four accounts, your company account, your HSA, your Roth IRA, and a taxable account. And again, if you want to start really easy, our investing challenge is a great way to do that okay guys and like i said if you need one-on-one -on -one help because i've met with so many of you already and you need me to kind of just really dive deep into your plans feel free to book a session with me one of the things that people always tell me when they leave our sessions is that they feel pumped they feel inspired they feel like they actually can achieve their goals because when you see a big number like one million dollars you feel like oh my goodness how am i going to do that but we create and craft a plan and a strategy for you and get you rolling on it, okay? It's no time like the present. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that quick, how much do I need to retire and me breaking what you need to be thinking about down. And if you want some easy retirement calculators, I'll leave a couple of them below. Fidelity has a great retirement calculator. You can put all your numbers in, it'll help you kind of come up to a magic number quicker. Nerd Wallet has another great calculator for retirement. There's a fire calculator for retirement. I'll leave those three calculators in the description box below if you want to take a look at that. And I'll also leave a really, really great article about saving for retirement from Fidelity because I think it helps you to kind of see and plan out your strategy a little better. It's something that most people don't think about until it's too late. But if you are 50, I even spoke to someone who's 61, is you have time, okay? We can make that time work for you to achieve your goals. You'd be surprised at what you can accomplish in a short amount of time time so let me do a fire update so we plan on retiring in almost five years at age 42 i can't believe i'm saying five years i used to say six but now that it's officially 2022 i'm saying five years so we retire early lord willing and five years so a quick update you know that our goal is to have a three million dollar net worth we have about eight hundred thousand dollars in fire assets i'm talking about liquidity most of all so our uh investment accounts i'm talking about the cash that we have on hand i am also talking about the rental properties that we have on hand as well because that to us is a asset i talked about in our 2022 financial goals video that we're trying to grow our net worth by one million it is a very stretch goal guys we're trying to buy like two properties invest one hundred and fifty thousand dollars it's a lot but and even if we don't achieve all those goals progress is progress and it's progress over perfection we just want to make sure that we give it our best and i know everybody's talking about like a word for the year our word for 2022 is done okay so whatever our best is just get it done that applies to our financial state our spiritual state our physical state whatever our best is get it done that's our word for the year is done and share with me your word for the year if that's something that you have for yourself so we're currently at about one million fifty thousand i'll have that net worth video coming out later this week we are confident that we will have enough to live off of in early retirement we are planning about seventy five eighty thousand dollars per year we do not plan on having a mortgage i've mentioned this before in videos that my husband has stock in his company he has a whole lot of stock in his company now the stock can go up the stock can go down but at the end of the day we will have at least enough 
to pay off our main home. So when we go into our early retirement, we will not have a mortgage on our main home. Now we will have mortgages on the rentals because that is a business that is under an LLC, but anything tied to us personally, we don't want to have any debt on. Now I have created in our mock budget for early retirement, a car payment, because just in case as we get older, we don't want to have to be dealing with, you know, reliance issues as we are aging, we may want to have a newer car. So I put that in our budget just in case we, you know, want to go down that road. We also are seeing our passive income increase for early retirement. So I always talk about passive income on this channel and passive income is so important for us achieving our early retirement because we need something to live off of. When we hit 42, we cannot access our 401k. We cannot access social security, even if it's still around. So we need some income to live off of. So we have side hustles. My husband has his side consulting firm that he really want to focus on during early retirement. I have MT and mommy trader. And now that I'm monetized on YouTube, that's another source of passive side income that we are so excited about dividend income, interest income, making sure we have a nice solid emergency fund, maxing out those Roth or the backdoor Roth IRA. And yes, we are planning to max out the 2022 backdoor Roth before Congress can change the law. And by the time you see this video, we probably have already started that process, but I'll let you guys know. Um, so yes, that is just a quick update on our fire goals. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you have a great year. Please, please leave me a comment down below. Have you started to think about what you needed for retirement and have you started to craft a plan for retirement because that's so important you have time time is your biggest and best friend when it comes to things like this and until next time i'll see you in the next one okay bye